Hello ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Dr. Kashif Prasada. I'm presenting a lecture on biliary diseases. This is for the PA program at the University of Toronto Faculty of Medicine. This lecture is presented under the Creative Commons license CC by SA. You can copy and make modifications as long as original and subsequent authors are credited. And all images contained in this presentation are also licensed under identical terms. This is a diagram that we're going to re keep referring back to. Um, this is this shows the biliary tree, um, our common bile duct, our cystic duct, our pancreatic duct, our ampulla of water. Uh, this is anatomy that you need to have memorized. You need to know this, like the back of your hand, and uh, this will be tested for sure. First of all, let's go over what gallstones are. These are crystalline concretions that form in the gallbladder. They are formed from cholesterol, bilirubin, calcium salts, and combinations of all three of these. Um, they may pass from the gallbladder distally to other parts of the, the biliary tract. They can go to your cystic duct, your common bile duct, your pancreatic duct, and they can get lodged in the ampulla of water. Now, Gallstones can lead to a variety of problems, including biliary colic, cholecystitis, gallstone pancreatitis, and ascending cholangitis. Now, our presentation of cholecystitis often hits the stereotypical fat female fertile 40. You have overweight women premenopausal around middle age or so. Um, other risk factors include rapid weight loss, advanced age, diabetes or hemolytic or sickle cell anemias. Now your typical biliary colic symptoms occur when the gallstone goes from the gallbladder into the cystic or common bile duct causing obstruction, inflammation and sometimes infection. Symptoms include right upper quadrant pain, epigastric pain, nausea and vomiting. It is often intermittent in the case of biliary colic but can be constant in the case of cholecystitis or cholangitis. The pain can radiate to the right shoulder and left back in some classical presentations and can be related to meals and fatty foods. The pain is op often accompanied by fever, chills, and anorexia, and positive Murphy sign in cholecystitis is 97% sensitive, but again only 48% sensitive in the elderly. Tests that you can order, um, they include your basics including CBC, liver function tests, bilirubin, amylase, alkal alkaline phosphatase, urinalysis, electrolytes, etc. And in some cases, especially in the case of biliary colic, these tests may end up being completely normal. You can do a chest x-ray and ECG to rule out any other cause of epigastric pain. Um, you can sometimes have myocardial infarction present as epigastric pain. You could have other lung pathologies or are GI perforations which can be caught on a chest x-ray. An ultrasound is the test of choice for biliary complaints. A HIDA scan is useful if the gallbladder is not very well visualized on ultrasound. This can often happen on, um, on your very uh, obese patients. Um, a CT scan is only about 50% sensitive for cholecystitis but it's useful for ruling out other causes. The treatment is um now, cholidocal lithiasis is defined as the presence of gallstones in the common bile duct. Um, these are often, let's refer back to our um, diagram, so your common bile duct is here, um, past the cystic duct. So your stone would come up here and get lodged down here. So this is, um, the presentation will often involve jaundice, right upper quadrant pain, clay colored stools, and a positive Murphy sign. The Blood tests will often show an elevated alkaline phosphatase and elevated conjugated bilirubin. There may be an elevated amylase if there is a concomitant pancreatitis. This can be diagnosed on ultrasound. It can be confirmed by MRCP, ERCP, or an interoperative cholangiogram. An ERCP can remove impacted stones, which is an advantage over MRCP. 
let's go over what these tests are. An MRCP is a magnetic resonance cholangiopancreatography. This is a non-invasive test which uses MR to visualize the biliary and pancreatic ducts. This can often miss very small biliary calculi, smaller than 6 millimeters, but it is better for detecting uh, cholangiocarcinoma and there is less of a risk of iatrogenic injury of pancreatitis. However, you can have false positives from air bubbles, blood clots, clips, and extraductal compression. An ERCP is an older test um, which is still used uh, with therapeutic intent since you can actually go in and remove stones uh, using your scope. So, and this involves insertion of, an, uh, of an, uh, a scope down the esophagus, down the stomach to the duodenum, you can fluoroscopically visualize the biliary and pancreatic ductal systems with the injection of dye. This can also be used for endoscopic sphincterotomies, removal of stones, insertion of stents, and dilatation of strictures, which are often useful in cases of, uh, of cancer. This is an image uh, showing um, the pancreatic duct uh, with your scope. Now, cholangitis is Another complication, it's an infection of the bile ducts. Um, this involves reflux of bacteria into the hepatic veins and ducts. So let's refer back to our, let's go back here. Um, so here's your, your stone would be here. And you have reflux of bacteria and bile back into your hepatic ducts. And then you get inflammation and infection here. Let's go back. Uh, this tends to occur when the bile duct is obstructed. Um, you can present with classically Charcot's triad, which is right upper quadrant pain, fever, and jaundice. And this becomes Reynolds' pentad when you add the symptoms of confusion and shock. And again, if this is untreated and, uh, not, um, and you don't remove the obstruction, then you will develop confusion, shock, and ultimately death. This is... Um, pus that is emitted from the ampulla of water, seen on endoscopy, this is a sign of cholangitis. Now, how do you diagnose this? On your lab tests, you will often see an elevated white blood cell count, elevated ALKFOS, GGT, gamma uh, glutamate transferase. You will often have elevated LFTs. You will often have positive blood cultures, and the culprit organisms, organisms are generally your usual suspects, the E. coli, Klebsiella, Enterobacter and Enterococcus. The enter and the elderly, you can often have anaerobes such as Bacteroides and Clostridium. Initial test is the easiest one to obtain, which is ultrasound, and this will often show a dilatation of the hepatic ducts and obstructive uh, an obstructive etiology. And the modality of choice and the curative modality is often ERCP. Now, how do you treat this? Um, ERCP again. IV fluids, um, antibiotics, which include um, your shotgun approach. You cover your gram-positives, your gram-negatives, and your anaerobes, depending on the risk factors of this patient. So elderly patients, like we mentioned, will have most likely anaerobes, so you might as well add the metronidazole. And ICU care for severe sepsis, as in all cases of severe sepsis. Uh, we'll move on. We'll just do a brief review of pancreatitis. You already covered this last week in Dr. Grover's lecture. Um, but 90% are attributable, attributable to alcohol or cholothiasis. Other precipitating causes include penetrating trauma, perf perforated peptic ulcer, iatrogenic causes including ERCP, obstruction from cancer, and drug-related or hyperlipidemia. And it results from the autodigestion of the pancreas by digestive enzymes. This can lead to, lead to local edema, interstitial hemorrhage, and vascular injury, ultimately leading to systemic inflammatory response syndrome, uh, ARDS, sepsis, uh, multisystem organ dysfunction, and death. Signs and symptoms um, usually have severe epigastric pain rating to the back. You can often mistake this for an MI or aortic dissection. Um, the patient also presents with anorexia and a history of alcohol use or gallstones. There is often, unsurprisingly, a present, uh, presence of tachycardia, nausea, vomiting, abdominal distension. And you can sometimes see the Cullen sign or the Gray Turner sign, which are uh, bluish discoloration around the umbilicus or bluish discoloration in the flanks when you have severely hemorrhagic pancreatitis. And then there are 
And then you should note, as always with any patient, hypotension and, or tachycardia and decreased saturation, these are really bad signs for anybody, especially in patients with pancreatitis. Again, our, our diagram. Um, this is our pancreas here. This is our pancreatic duct. This can get obstructed. Then the pancreatic digestive enzymes have nowhere to go except to digest the pancreas itself. Very sad. Tests. Um, serum amylase, this is the one that you have um, usually available in most hospitals. The specificity is surprisingly only 75% if it's three times above normal. And this can often be elevated in salivary gland inflammation. You will sometimes see in parotitis or sialoadenitis. Um, and also any pathology involving the bowel, fallopian tubes, ovaries, testes, thyroid, or muscle. Lipase is more sensitive and specific, but not always available. White blood cell count is usually, but not always, elevated. Alkaline phosphatase is elevated if the biliary tree is involved. And you will often have increases in creatinine and BUN and some hypocalcemia. Now imaging your plain films, you will sometimes see calcifications in the pancreas from chronic pancreatitis. You will sometimes see an ileus or sentinel loop. Ultrasound is useful for ruling out biliary disease. A CT is a test of choice for pancreatitis, and it's useful for useful for visualizing any injury, inflammation, or finding any abscesses, cysts, or pseudocysts. And again, ERCP, MRCP is useful in the workup if biliary causes are suspected. Now, you don't need to know all the components and how to calculate the Ranson score, but you need to know the different criteria that go into the Ranson score. In this case would be, you know, age, white blood cell count, AST, LDH, blood glucose, calcium, etc. Um, you don't need to know the numbers or anything like that. But it's important to know that this is an important predictor of, of mortality for pancreatitis. And this is how you score it. Again, we won't test you on this. Now, treatment, um, as usual, is the ABCs, airway, breathing, circulation first. Fluids, often five to six liters of crystalloids are required because of third spacing of blood and fluids. Keep the patient NPO and rest the pancreas. ERCP if a gallstone is suspected and pain control. Thank you very much.